everybody. I'm Lauren Veneziani McCarthy. And I'm Kevin McCarthy, and uh, we are two married film critics who live in the D.C. area, and uh, we're here to review Solo, a Star Wars story. And, and uh, this is our Ewok. Yeah, his name is Oscar. <laughs> uh, we've done reviews before uh, in the shirts. She has a uh, I Love You shirt, and my shirt says I Know, but I wanted to change it up so I have my Star Wars tie on. Um, I just got back from work, but this is our dog Oscar. He's Chewy, so we're going to talk He's about Chewy. Solo, a Star Wars story, Ron Howard's latest film. Uh, this is the spin-off and origin story for the character of Han Solo. Alden Ehrenreich is taking on the role of younger Han Solo, uh, obviously made famous by Harrison Ford. And yeah, the, the, the and it's a prequel. Yeah, the film deals specifically with, uh, roughly about ten years prior to the events of meeting Han Solo in that cantina in A New Hope, uh, when he, you know, with the famous Greedo sequence. So yeah, that's basically the plot line. And essentially, you're learning about the idea of them him meeting Chewie and their relationship and how they meet and specifically there's a lot of things that happen that we know from storylines and stories we've heard about Han Solo throughout the trilogy. Yeah and listen I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. I grew up with the movies more so than I think even Kevin did. Um, we were both blown away with The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. We were both a little disappointed. Rogue One I thought was really good especially like the third act. So this one to be honest I didn't have a lot of high expectations going into this film, but I will say I had a lot of fun with it, and I do like it better than The Last Jedi. Yeah, it's definitely better than The Last Jedi, yeah. for sure. I, I still... I still wish we could see Phil Lord and Chris Miller's movie. Me too. Uh, for people who aren't aware of that, Chris, uh, Chris Miller and Phil Lord had shot a lot of the movie prior to leaving the project, and Ron Howard stepped in to reshoot a lot of the film. There is still Phil Lord and Chris Miller's footage in the movie. Some of their footage still exists. Um, one thing I will say about Alden Ehrenreich, by the way, is that he doesn't yeah. impersonate Harrison Ford, which I love that. I mean, they could have they could have easily gone with somebody who sounded and looked exactly like him, but right. you have to understand, this is roughly 10 years prior to New Hope, so... The, this Han is not the same Han we already know. Like we, this, this guy he's is not vulnerable. As cop. He's not. He he's arrogant, but he's not as arrogant as Harrison Harrison Ford. It's and like Kevin said about not impersonating. It's kind of like what Michael Fassbender did in Steve Jobs right. for Steve Jobs. That's a great uh, a yeah. comparison. It's like because they don't necessarily look exactly alike, but like they exude like similar qualities yeah, in everything that these two characters have. The beauty of his performance is that in the beginning he's not the Han we know. It, yeah. it, there's elements to him, but I feel like as the movie progresses and as the arc progresses, we start seeing elements of that arrogance coming into play. Uh, and you know, reportedly there may be two more of these, so we'll see how that plays into that factor. Um, Ron Howard is, you know, he's a, he does a solid job. This is this is a fun passable, entertaining movie. Uh, to me, it's, now, it's nowhere near the level of greatness, uh, in my opinion, that The Force Awakens and or Empire but or I New think, Hope. Like, I think with like The Force Awakens, it's like a totally different story. At least here with Solo, it's like, it is a prequel. We all know that these, we're talking about a massive, massive, beloved movie character, like one of the most beloved movie characters of all time. So I think like, we can't, we can't necessarily compare, I can't, I can't compare it to Force Awakens just because like, that's just, I, I mean, yes, it's not as good as Force Awakens, it's better than Last but Jedi, whatever. Force, Force Awakens and Empire Strikes Back and New Hope and Return of the Jedi are on completely different levels of quality and storytelling. Um, specifically something like, if you compare Force Awakens to, Han, to Solo, a Star Wars story, there is a massive jump in quality. And, and that is, But like, to me, this is harder to do anyway, because Solo's harder to do because of the fact that like, nobody was really asking for a Han Solo prequel. And like, they it was like almost an impossible task to do and i i know the movie's getting mixed reviews but i had a lot of fun with it my major problems was that i think like maybe 10 15 minutes in the middle could have been cut but i thought the performances were great i thought alden was great amelia clark woody harrelson um paul bettany donald glover everybody's i, I glover's just think, really good the movie needed yeah. way more lando like, i had, I, uh, I was uh, satisfied with how uh, how much lando was in uh, it i think donald glover is perfect as lando he, he really captures exactly what billy d williams captured with the character years ago uh, i wanted more of that character to me the the highlight of this film is the han and chewy relationship yeah definitely i, I love their aspect i think june uh Jonas is really really amazing as chewbacca and that whole uh, that dynamic between those two is fantastic. Uh, one technical thing, uh, Ron Howard did a really cool thing on this particular film with Bradford Young, the, the cinematographer, where they were able to actually give the 
actors actual visual effects in front of their faces while in the Millennium Falcon cockpit. That's so cool. specifically like when they're going into light speed, the actors had screens in front of them that actually showed the light speed visual effects so the light from the light speed could interact with their faces naturally versus having to put it on a green screen. And Ron Howard said that was the first time they've ever been able to do that in a Star Wars film in the Millennium Falcon cockpit. So that to me added a very cool level of immersion. Uh, I think the film does have some pacing issues. The, the middle and the end have some issues. It feels like it goes on forever um but performance wise to me this film is I didn't fine i feel that way about i mean yes 10 minutes in the middle i thought but i thought that the third act was great and i actually really liked the ending i thought I it kept going i, I remember yeah. i was i was thinking about the i'm a big kevin smith fan there's a scene in clerks 2 where jeff anderson is breaking down lord of the rings versus star wars and he's <laughs> and, and there's like there's this whole bit and then there's this idea that you know, Lord of the Rings had this concept where it would not end in Return of the King. That's kind of how I felt about this movie. It would after a after a after a very specific action scene, which I think could have been a climactic moment of the movie. It keeps going. But there's also a scene at the end that's like could this is spoiler free, obviously, but it could be really important to the next two films. Yeah. And I I liked the way that it ended, and I think it go the ending in like a final shot, like kind of goes back to the whole like Han and Chewie relationship yeah. and how their friendship formed. And um, I don't know, I had a lot of fun with it. I I like this film. I don't love it. I think yeah. it's a very passively Definitely entertaining wanted it film. To be better. My problem with and, and the script is there's very big problems with the script. There are some very horrifically written scenes um specifically scenes where they're coming up with very famous names to characters it's not um, that bad you've seen one of He's them in the trailers lying. already <laughs> the chewbacca you've seen the chewbacca one the chewbacca one in the trailer where he's uh, he says essentially um your name's too long we, ha we have to come up with a nickname i did not like that i also there, i'm not going to give the other one away but there's one where a very famous character's name is explained on how he got it, and I thought that that was one of the most poorly written scenes. It was I to me, it, it. It, it called attention to it. It essentially made the movie feel like a highlight reel. How are we going to give this person their name? It's how not gonna... nearly as big of a scene as Kevin's it's making it deal. out to me. It should be. It's not. Yeah. It's like it's like a ten second thing. Yeah, and the weird and thing is, fine. we're arguing, but we're not that far off on ratings. No, I, I, still... I just did like it more than you. Yeah. I feel like I did like it way more than you, though. I I think the film is fine. It works. It has great action, great performances. Yeah. Alden's fantastic. Donald Glover's great. Woody Harrelson's great. I had problems Your with the script. Your major problems with screenplay and it could be a little and shorter. And pacing and also, yeah. yeah. So I gave it a three and a half out of five, which is essentially a B minus. So my ranking, and then Lauren can give hers, I would go Empire number one, Force Awakens two. Yes, I, think I like it better than New Hope. New Hope three. Then I would go Return of the Jedi. Then I would go... Rogue One, then I would go this film, then I would go Last Jedi, then I would go Episode 3, Episode 1, Episode 2. <laughs> Yeah. That's where I am. Well, the last, the episodes one through three, like whatever. I, I don't three's, mind three. Three's fine. And one's three's okay. Fine. Two's um, terrible. I'm giving it a four out of five. I know we're only a half star off, um, but I, I just, I did have a lot of fun with it. I thought it could be a little bit shorter, but I think for Star Wars fanfare, it was, it was really well done. Um, and I thought, I mean. It kind of sucks for Phil and, and Chris. I don't really know what the whole story was there, but I do think that Ron Howard did like the best job that he could coming into it, which is like kind of a cool appreciation for all the directors involved. I'm giving it a four out of five. I don't know about my rankings. I do know that it's better than Last Jedi. Empire <laughs> and Empire and Force Awakens are my top yeah. two favorites. And, and New then, Hope is obviously there. But, and then New Hope. But yeah. I do. I'm going to mention this, and, and this is interesting. Um, this film was shot digitally, as was Rogue One. Uh, I still, I just wish everything in the Star Wars universe continued with film. Force Awakens, uh, was, Force film Awakens was film. Jedi was film. All the originals were film. Um, I don't know yeah. about the uh, earlier episodes. I think uh, Lucas shot episode one, two, and three on film. I'll double check that. But I know for sure that Force Awakens and Jedi and the original trilogy were all shot on film. And to me, there's something beautiful about film, as J.J. Abrams has said about it's magical. And there's something to me digitally about watching Rogue One and Solo in a digital format being filmed. Filmed, it does feel a little glossy um, at times, but it's still beautifully shot. I mean, yeah. Rogue One and, and Solo have gorgeous, gorgeous cinematography. And again, I love what they did with the Millennium Falcon cockpit. Yeah. I just feel like there's not a, a through line of green and cinematic film and, and that I want in the, in the in I like that. how you're wearing a Star Wars tie and a Star Trek tie bar. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I did it on purpose. You're the only person who noticed it today. Me, why did you wear a Star Trek tie bar? I, I like both of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
All right, so he those has are... a BB-8 tie bar and R2-D2, by the way. Yeah, so those are, those are the reviews. Three and a half out of five, four out of five for Lauren. We're going to keep this short, so yeah. check out our other reviews on the channel. Of Go... Deadpool 2. Yeah, Deadpool 2 is on here as well, so thank you guys. Bye. All right, Oscar's <laughs> going into the camera.